All right. Good evening. Thank you for uh, being patient uh, uh, for the start of the meeting itself. Uh, this is the Beaver Creek Board of Zoning Appeals, and uh, we have one case in front of us tonight, a variance request. Uh, I would like to explain before we take roll uh, how we actually operate uh, for the hearing, for the case itself. We will ask anyone speaking for the case or wish to explain it to come up to the podium and read the little testimony card that's there inserting your name and address and uh, then you would be able to speak for the case itself. After we hear uh, all testimony for the applicant, then we will uh, ask for people who wish to have other statements or speak against. Hearing none, we will close the meeting and discuss it amongst the board members. So with that said, would you give us roll? Mr. Thomas? Here. Mr. Jenkins? Here. Mr. Martinsic? Here. Mr. Henry? Here. Mr. Hunts? Here. Right. Would you? And yeah, I believe you would also note him as an alternate. Mr. Uh, Brown. Brown. <laughs> I didn't say Mr. Roberts. <laughs> yeah, here. All right, excellent. Uh, if you are ready, board, I can go ahead and read the public hearing notice for Please. you. Please. Okay. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is so that the Board of Zoning Appeals may review and act on a request made by GA White Home, Homes, Inc. on behalf of and with consent of property owners Kim and Rolf Anderson for parcel B03-0002004-3002-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-0004-
while keeping the pool fully enclosed with fencing for safety. While we initially applied for the pool and fence permits, we had not been certain the white fence would be installed by the HOA. And so just as an aside, um, they applied for their fence and pool permits in January. Uh, we uh, we um, uh, gave them those permits. We approved those permits because originally the plan was a five foot all the way around. And then we got communication from GA White, the home builder, that said, hey, actually, the HOA is going to be installing the four-foot fence along the back property line. They don't want us to have a five-foot fence breaking that up, so what can we do? And that's how we came to this conversation and the variance process. Um, so it continues, in addition, we will be taking the following measures to help with safety for the pool area. White wire will be added on the interior of the HOA's four foot white fence in order to deter climbing through the fence while limiting the ability to easily get onto the property. And there's a picture of what that will look like here. So just some material in between the fence slats uh, to discourage people from sliding through those slats. Uh, the pool will be equipped with an auto cover for safety. It can securely withstand 480 pounds per square foot of uh, force. Um, and the pool's location will be approximately 50 feet from the back property line slash the fence line. Um, and then they proceed to answer, they, they want to speak to the eight criteria, which is what we typically have applicants do. So just to, we'll go ahead and take a look at the criteria and then their response. Um, a, uh, the granting of variances. So this is no variance of the strict application of the zoning resolution shall be granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals until and unless the board finds the following. So the first is that there exist conditions and or circumstances relating to the property that would create practical difficulties for the property owner if they were required to strictly conform to the zoning resolution. Uh, they respond by saying the difficulty to the property owner stems from the HOA requirements for the four foot white fence around the Stonehill Village community. Other options such as making the white fence five feet would disrupt the aesthetic continu continuity for the community. Also running the five foot dark bronze along the property line, that's the fence that they're going to be installing. Um, alongside or next to the four foot white fence would cause hardship on maintenance for the property owner as well as disrupting the continuity of the neighborhood. Uh, your second criteria being the variance is the minimum variance possible and other alternatives for resolving conflict are impractical or infeasible. Uh, their response is that our solution described above is the minimum variance possible for a one foot change in fence height. Um, I think sometimes applicants have a, you know, they see the legalese and I don't know if that's the best answer, but I want to expand on that a little bit. When we're talking about minimum variance possible, it's how little can you deviate from what's required in the code? And is there a way to deviate less that is feasible and practical? If that's not the case, then uh, item two, criteria two would um, be met. Um, so then the third criteria here, the granting of the variance is in harmony with the general spirit, intent, and purpose of the zoning resolution. The response is the variance will uphold the general spirit, intent, and purpose of the zoning resolution. That's the typical response we see from applicants. Uh, granting of the variance will not be injurious to surrounding properties in the general neighborhood or, we, or be otherwise detrimental to public welfare. Their response is the granting of the variance will only enhance the surrounding properties compared to other options. Uh, the criteria five, it will not result in a deleterious change in the character of the community. Um, and their response is the granting of the variance will not result in a deleterious change of character for the Stonehill Village community. Uh, six, the granting of the variance will not infringe upon the rights and quiet enjoyment of adjacent property owners and will not diminish property values, endanger the public safety, or public nuisance. Uh, their response is that the granting of the variance will not infringe upon the rights of adjacent homeowners. Uh, seven is that the granting of the variance is for a compelling reason and not simply because the applicant's plans conflict with the zoning resolution requirements when reasonable alternatives are available. Um, the granting of the variance is the best option available is their response. Uh, 
And finally, the granting of the variance is not solely for economic benefit to the applicant. And their response is, there is no economic benefit to the applicant or homeowner. And they thank you again for your time and consideration. So I appreciate your uh, indulgence in allowing me to read that on behalf of the applicant. We do have the site plan, essentially, of what they are proposing to build here. So I'd like to bring that up a little bit. Um, as described, they would have a five-foot fence that essentially encloses three sides, the front and both side uh, property lines, or you know the house uh, line and both side property lines. And along the rear is where the four-foot HOA installed fence would be located. The pool, like they said, is um, a little bit over 50 feet away from the rear property line. This is the pool here that they're proposing. And then I did, um, at the request of one of the members, I did want to bring up that, uh, in fact, so two things. One, as far as any records we could gather indicate, there has not been a request to this board for a variance from this, um, from this article. What has happened in the past is that certain residents have have said, we don't want to have a fence at all. We think that an electronic pool cover would serve uh, the safety functions of the fence. And they were told by staff, that's not in the spirit of variance to go from, you have to have a full enclosed fence to having no fence. That's not quite level of variance. There's no way you could meet that second criteria of it being the minimum variance necessary. And so they, um, Two residents over in 2017 and 2020 brought um, a requested change to the zoning resolution text to actually allow for um, automatic covers or electronic pool covers to be installed in lieu of any fencing requirements. Both times that um, that request was evaluated um, and recommended as approved to the trustees by the zoning commission and both times the trustees uh, disagreed with that recommendation. In 2017, what resulted was a change from a six-foot fence height requirement to a five-foot fence height requirement. And in 2020, no change resulted. Um, it was just denied that we would include language that would allow pool covers in lieu of fences for whatever reason. So that is some additional background in terms of how this matter has been addressed by Zoning Commission and trustees in the past. I thought that was important that you guys uh, knew that. I also wanted to address that there are two existing pools in the Stonehill Village community right now and a, a large number of homes, several hundred homes. One pool is the clubhouse pool. So I would not even, you know, that's not quite a one-to-one -one comparison, right? It's, oh. uh, it's existing open community space. That fence is six feet. And then the other pool is located at 1229 Homestead Drive. That fence is also five feet or above in, in all places. Um, however, it does not fully enclose the yard. And I think that's critical. Mm -hmm. I think it's critical for this case to see what they did. Mm -hmm. um, it also does not have the, this property doesn't have any of the white HOA fencing that would be, that would run through it. So it did not, um, it did not have that quote unquote, practical dif difficulty as the applicants described there. Sure. So with that additional information, I would be glad to now answer any questions you might have about the information presented to you. The one question that I would like to get answered and we probably won't get it today is oh. if we do approve the four foot and that can give the variance, what kind of liability are we creating for the township if somebody did indeed get over that fence mm. and get into the pool. I think that's a great question. You're right. Without Township Legal Counsel here, I can't give you a, a full answer on that. Really? Um, what do you, it's not just over. It's talking great. for. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. the wire is not much of a barrier. Yeah. 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 Right. That's talking for. for I don't, I, I, I'm going to agree with you. I don't really do we have anybody care here? so much cognitively. I'm more worried about a liability know. standpoint we from the that. township as well. Before as we do this. Pick up what you're saying. Because what happens okay, if, too. you know, teenage <laughs> kids know, decide, hey, I want to. Uh, it's a lot easier to jump a four foot fence. I mean, a five foot fence. I think about the 
that white stop. picket fence right down there at um, after it's the uh, 818 brewery. And then so hold on, I think we're getting some. We have a uh, one in the audience. Right. Is yeah. that a for this case tonight? I don't know. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Can we hold conversation so. or discussion on uh, your recommendations and ask if you would like to testify for the case? Um, or get. Well, you should ask well, for first. Right. Not for. Okay. Okay. Is there I anyone? Have, I have a question about that picture, the last one of the. Okay. If, if you want to ask question and you're going to be speaking against or just want to make general comments, you still have to come up and, and talk there. Seeing no one else in the audience, I believe that we'll move directly to open comments. Um, my name is Julie Sweeney. I'm a resident for almost five years. Of uh, would you just please read the, um, there's a little script there for you to start with. Script. I. I, Julie Sweeney of 1436 Champions Way, solemnly swear that the statements I am about to make before the Beaver Creek Township Board of Zoning Appeals are the truth to the best of my knowledge and belief. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Okay. The first question I have about the photo that you had put um, with the existing pool in Stonehill Village. Sure. You took those photos in the last day or two I uh, saw. Yesterday, correct. Um, from that view, is there an, I see a perimeter of uh, vegetation screening on one side. Was there vegetation screening behind you as well as in front of you? No. Uh, only on it's, the two sides? Yeah, the it just has some rose bushes and some trees on okay. basically ringing the fence, but behind that is grass. Okay. Only because I'm, I've looked at the my neighborhood, which may or may not be exactly the same as, as the the white barn because it's newer. There might be slightly different regulations and I don't have access to all their landscaping details, but specifically for um, my neighborhood, it talks about fences and any fence that's over 48 inches has to um, have, you know, Stonehill Village itself, its board of, its uh, HOA association has to approve it. And if it is more than five foot, it needs to be set back 15 feet from the property line. So I'm, I'm not really understanding how the homeowners put their proposal in if they don't, unless their regulations are so different from what I'm reading from my regulations. Okay. What, what, is, what was that? You said 15 feet from what? From the property line, if it's more. And, and, the, and the fence itself would also need to um, be screened substantially from all sides, all vistas, all views. And because the walking trail is, is on the back line of the property, the four-foot fence that's not there yet, that, but will be there, mm -hmm. it's aesthetically like they're, like they're proposing that's not going to look great. But if they have a five-foot if they even want to bring it in 15 feet on both sides and run it down the length of their property and then bring it 15 feet from the white barn fence and then it, it there's some pieces missing in in the understanding for either from myself or from what they're proposing i don't understand how they're thinking they can run five foot fences down the sides okay. coming okay. six inches from the house is that what you were saying before I we don't uh, deal with HOA. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that we can only hear the case based upon the regulations for right. the township. Yeah. And that Not the HOA. HOA... We'll do the rest. No, I, yeah, I do you, realize that, that, but I'm yeah. just... I'm just The whole proposal just looks like it's off from the beginning because it, there's either a misunderstanding of what they need to present to you because they probably have to represent information. Mm -hmm. If... And generally, they have the HOA's blessing before they ever come in. I guarantee that didn't happen here. I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like there's a lot of factors. That, that has that, no bearing on our decision. Um, yeah. The four foot fence, just specifically with that aesthetically, you know, for the other people in that neighborhood and just the whole, that's going to always be a visual. If they ultimately screen it with veg vegetation, then not so much. And wherever that lands, the fence itself, safety wise, the. Um, the neighborhood just put in a playground that's less than, or may give or take 200 yards from that 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 back lot, the back where the white fence would be. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So that's another that's another issue. Fence, if a four foot fence, you know, the kids hop over it all the time trying to get a frisbee sure, or whatever, um, and they've been known to sit on them. And because they're only plastic, they do pop off. Yes. So you know, if there's yeah. just mesh there, it's going to collapse the whole thing and not really be the safety. Okay. So those those are the two main points. And and the other issue is I'll follow up with the HOA because um, the application itself just seems to be a little bit off in what they think they want to do versus what the regulations already say they're allowed to do. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah. So that's that that's about it. Oh, well, the, you know, thank right. you for your patience. Right. Absolutely. I, yeah. 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 Um, some of the information is yeah. very important. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Like, thank you. Okay, seeing that there's no one else to speak for the public, let's close the public portion and open it up to discussion amongst staff and the members. I'd like to go first, and I'm going to address some of the issues that she brought up. Uh, First of all, if you take a look at the fence, even putting the wire mesh behind it, uh, it's a slatted fence. You got stairs right up. Climb right up it. Right up them. Yeah. It's yep. it, it's not there as a security fence. It's right. not a non climb. It's aesthetic. Yeah. Absolutely. Fifty feet from the property line, they have plenty of room to put another fence around their pool. So they to say that, you know, uh, they're taking it to the minimum standards for the the variance request absolutely not they don't even need to do a variance request if they would go ahead and just do a pull pull enclosure probably they don't want to have to deal with the hoa uh, review board design review board if they figure they come down this way and we agree to it that that'd be no problem Safety wise, I am very concerned about this. And there's other ways they could enclose that pool. Right. And make it. And, and, and most pools don't include the entire yard yeah, inside yeah. the fence. Right. Correct. For the pool. Correct. So there would be no reason that they couldn't bring this fence uh, a lot closer to the pool. Yeah. At least put a gate in, even. You know, like if they want to access their back, the, the well, back lot. Well, they'll have to put a gate in yeah. and get back there to mow or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. But, but I'm in total agreement. This, this, because there's nothing to keep, there's nothing to make them keep the uh, little white fence they're going to attach to this fence up and it's going to rust. Well, and can, Well, can I, can I piggyback on this? So um, I put in, let's go back to 818, the, the brewery here in Beaver Creek. That's the, this is basically the same fence, right? That they have next between Angel's Pass and the, the okay. 818, right? So I put that fence in a, a while back. And I can tell you that I had to go replace that fence numerous times a year because people try to climb it because they want to go from the park because there's no parking spots in the brewery. So they would climb over this fence and they would break slats all the time. And I just, I just think that that agree. I think this is farthest away from safety that you can get right and, and we have this other great option to just yeah. move the move the move the fence in and make it a five foot what, fence what was the what was closer the other, to the pool what was the other photo the one that we had in the same development the uh, th- how they had it closer yeah they, they it was a pool enclosure is yeah. there a, is yeah, there a white absolutely. fence behind this fence no there's not she just no. said so no huh she said it yeah, but still, like on that one, for example, that's still five foot. And you it's put a, non- a gate on it. And that's a non climb right. fence. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Right, and they can landscape it if they're required to and all that with the HOA. Correct. And, and I think the one thing and that, that takes changed. away the safety, the, the granting the variance for a shorter fence and getting into a liability issue. Yeah. And I think one of the things that she brought out but that I was not even aware of was Part the location of the playground. Right. I mean, that's a magnet to begin with. Oh, yeah. And Max, do you have the ability to bring satellite up to that block? I do. Although, unfortunately, it is from when there is nothing on the site. It's just a dirt lot. But I can still bring it up if you like. I don't, I also don't know that it includes the, um, the playground that's spoken of. All you need is an apron around the pool and you can have a fence. How many houses around there? This lady said is the whole 15 foot setback, that 15 foot setback for anything, it's going to be not just be in the back, it's on the sides. Yeah. So they're going to have problems with the HOA down the sides. We don't care about HOAs. HOAs has no bearing on anything we do, that's a civil matter. But to say that they 
they wouldn't still have issues that the HOA is wrong because the the five foot fence they have on the property oh. line. And it's oh no, I'm not. Fifteen feet. I'm saying they got to get this approved through their HOA. I'm sure. No, I agree. I agree. I think they tried to come here to try to go around their HOA. Is what I think. The HOA, the design review board, and the builders tend to be in bed with each other. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Especially why, because he's he's developing the whole area back here. He pretty much can okay. get away with a lot of the stuff he wants to do. Okay. That's where they're putting the playground. Where's the playground going? You said playground, it's already sewer okay. right. Five, zero, the R. Yeah. At the back of that lot, the, that lot. So this one right here, there. out in that green space. That's yeah. Right okay. There. Right on that corner. And then what lot are we talking? It's like you said. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's right in it, in it. Oh, and in the, and it's walking path behind it. Besides. Yeah, that's. Anywhere there's a white fence, there's always a walking path. Right. Right. So. Right. Yeah, I don't. I don't see no way. They don't. Right. That, that's no a huge way. lot. They don't. I can't imagine no why lot. they would need it. It's two lots. Oh, okay. Yep. I can't imagine why they would need to fence in the whole thing to the pool. But. Mm -hmm. I, and the house is centered on a double lot. Hmm. Yeah, and that. We'll bring this up too, just because this should give you an idea. I don't think of how that wire fence so much is aesthetically space. pleasing. So what's the distance? <laughs> it's like chicken wire. Right yeah, to but it's like used. It's you know, it's used quite a bit in. Uh, is it for people who have dogs? dogs oh, right. That oh. tie into the. Probably gonna have to look at the original guys. Hold they, on. They put that uh, chicken. You need, you need better off. Do I don't think it's scanned very well. So you won't see it. But you said from the left side? They won't. From either side. Gotta What's the distance side. from the or, house or they could just put up the left side property lines. You know what I mean? Side. Along the outside. As soon as that dog gets close. Also, that's a pretty good distance. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to read. They got plenty of room to move it in 15 feet. I mean, if it's if the pool's 50 feet from the back, it's probably got to be about 40 feet. All right. Yeah. And maybe further on the left-hand side, right? Because the apron sticks out over to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately... I am not able to read this from the printout here. So the board is tracking right along where I was thinking. I can tell you historically the line in the sand. This has been one of the things. I'm all for property owner rights. Don't want this has been a line in the sand thing from the height of the fence. You want, does he have to? It's been one of the threats against the threat in your direction. Have we no, never he, granted an variance for that? that. Has there ever been a variance granted for the height of the fence around the pole? That's no, not to my knowledge. Never. That's 272 or 222. Not, no, that's, that's 200. always kind of been that's one of the... As well as it should. Yes. And there was, I mean, the, the whole conversation going from 6 to 5 is because of the national standard right. now is, is a 5 foot with 4 inch on center split rails to prevent the kid's head from going through the spindles. So, you know, that's why that was changed in 17 from 6 to, from six to 5. Max, on the cases in 17 and 20, do they have pools? Uh, do they currently have pools? Yeah. Yes, they ended do they up. they have fences? Yes. And what would height are the fences? They would have to be at least five feet. Five, five, feet, five feet, five feet. Like I said, there has not been ever, uh, even brought here, much less approved, mm -hmm. a variance from the five-foot requirement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Liability is a good point. You guys jumped on that right away. Uh, the, it, I love it with the automatics. Being someone that has a power cover, it's not automatic, it's electric. Automatic means that if the wind blows or it gets rain on it, it shuts itself automatically. But my cover, I even have to have a pump on it because you can drown on top of the cover. <laughs> Jeez. So. Okay. Because you can go out on it and the water comes up through it. Yeah. Is yeah. that a trampoline? Oh, no, that's a trampo cover. This is... And those usually aren't safe. Those usually aren't automatic covers. Automatic covers are solid covers where the water does not come up through it. The water actually pulls off. Flexible. It, okay. And you have to have a separate pump to keep the water off to present, prevent an animal or a kid from. Right, right. Drowning. Yeah. Drowning yeah. on top of the safety cover. Hmm. Well, well, I think the easiest. You want to make a motion to deny then? Well, no. let me. No. Let, let me. Can't. Oh, we can't? 
No. Lee, and I don't understand. I'll be the first one. I've asked over and over where it makes any sense. We can't make a motion to deny it. We have to present the, the motion as submitted, mm -hmm. and then either say yay or nay. Robert, Robert's okay. rules say you present it in the in the, in the uh, aforementioned mm -hmm. format, and then you either vote yes or no. Oh, okay. Or it is. So when you make your motion, you don't you, you make would, a motion to. The motion would be to uh, to, to approve. approve approve as submitted. Oh, right. Right. okay, okay, yeah, okay. That's what we're Do you want to? I will make it if we're ready to, to well, close the, the discussion. Yeah, and just real point of point of order, real important. I apologize. There has to be a second. <clears throat> we know that. Right. Uh, okay. oh, just yeah. just chill. Well, the motion hasn't been made yet. Well, because then it he, goes he was on the board. For well, I know years. he was, yeah. but, but yeah. we're a board. We we've, we've yeah. been doing this. Okay, yeah. we're not children. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Have, have you closed? Have you closed? He's running it. Okay. Yeah. Is, I'm going to ask if there's any more discussion. Before. I was just going to ask: Does staff have any more testimony? Staff does not have any more testimony for you. Thank you. With uh, no more testimony, I'll call for a motion. I'd like to make a motion that the uh, request be approved as submitted. Motion's been made. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Mr. Thomas? No. Mr. Mark Kuzmik? No. Mr. Hendrick? No. No. Mr. Jenkins? No. Mr. Brown? Uh, he no, not. he can't vote. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Hensley? No. All right. Why do you call him Mr. Brown? Because <laughs> we, we have oh, another okay, Jeff right. on the Zoning Commission, and we've what? been confusing his last name. We have a second Jeff oh, on the Zoning Commission. Oh, we have two oh, names. Oh, okay. Same. okay. okay. Apologies, we'll Jeff. One of those Sam. Yes, we, we're no strangers to, to accidental <laughs> misnamings here. Um, I was calling him Sam in a meeting one time. He says, I just want to get the record straight. My name is Max. <laughs> I was like, like, what? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Okay. So, board, with that, that would mean that the uh, request has been denied, uh, not approved. Um, the only thing that I have left for you on the agenda is: Did we ever get? Did we get the minutes for this? For this one or not? Minutes. I don't think we did. Yeah. Did we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to check. I didn't think we had any, but because uh, it's not on the agenda, so actually. That is the business for today, unless you is have Is there another. any new business coming up that we should be made aware of? We don't have any current cases or anything like that. Um, no current applications or even conversations that we're in that might lead to an application at this time. Okay. Um, if you'll give me a moment, I will tell you a little bit about the status of the um, uh, comprehensive land use plan update. I like to keep you guys informed there if that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, so basically, we're at the point now we are working on the final draft. Uh, the Zoning Commission had a work session um, to look at, I, I would call it like, you know, um, not beta, yeah, maybe beta version of the draft, almost there. Um, they had a couple of substantive, uh, substantive changes that um, I think after consideration we're going to be looking at um, including. Um, and we also have the steering committee meeting next Tuesday. Um, and so the 17 person steering committee will also take a look at the text, prevent their, or provide their comments. And after we have those, we're gonna do kind of this final, final draft to include all those comments. Um, seeing some of the comments we got and looking with our, or working with our consultant, we think it's gonna push the timeline back one month. We hope to have it in front of the zoning commission in May. I think now we're looking at June for uh, adoption, if all goes well. Um, and I think it'll be better for it. The Zoning Commission really made some some great points, uh, specifically about um, how it reads to a lay person, if you will. And I, they're not lay people in the Zoning Commission, right? They, But even someone who doesn't look at code every day or... And so I think it's, it's gonna be a very positive change that we're gonna be making over the next month. Um, and yeah, we had a great, um, that second round of engagement through online surveys and things that we did and open houses and road shows to different, we had some great feedback there that was worked into this beta draft. So 
We're very excited about the state of it. I think we just want to, we spent nine months. I think we want to spend that extra month to make sure that those nine months of work don't get muddied in, in some poor language decisions. So that's where we're at with that. Um, once it's passed, I imagine that there'll be quite a number of changes to the zoning resolution that come about because of the comprehensive land use plan. Uh, everything from new zoning districts to changes to existing resolution text. Um, you guys will be seeing that tangentially, right? As people um, run up against those new changes. I imagine that, uh, well, let's just put it this way. I imagine that after we get our omnibus done after this, that we might see some cases where we are talking about variances from riparian corridors, for instance, and, and, uh, and things that you haven't seen before. So. That's kind of where we're at the comprehensive land use plan update. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you guys might have about that process before we uh, before we adjourn. When you when you say zoning changes, uh, where where are the areas that, that they're looking? So when I say new zoning districts created, yeah, yeah. Um, basically there we've taken an approach looking at zoning as kind of character based rather than traditional Euclidean character based being. You have, a, you have an idea of what an area should look and feel like, but it doesn't necessarily nail it down on a parcel by parcel basis. It's, okay. it's kind of some gradients in between. Okay. We'll be creating things like low impact commercial districts based on what we have in the plan. Okay. Um, so that will be the kind of the, the most prominent changes that you'll see to the map. Um, but then we'll be doing everything from like taking a look at the zoning resolution and updating definitions, um, adding new language that would support the changes that are, you know, in the comprehensive land use plan, those kind of things. So. so can I request, and I've done this for other things and it, it has not materialized, but when you start getting some significant changes that you're, you're looking at and things that we have to be kept up with, can we please have a training yeah. session to where we understand the changes hmm. and understand the reasoning behind the changes. It really would make our, I think that's our job a lot reason. easier if we if yeah. we knew that. Give the reason. I so think that's please, great. Please um, try to schedule that. If you I would even suggest if you all are amenable that um, perhaps we could hold a work session with you guys basically as soon as the resolution has, you know, once it's gone to the board give you a rundown. I can also give you all the links. Once I, I don't want to do it in this draft format quite yet because we are going to be making some substantial changes, but even before it's passed, once we have that final draft, I can send that information to you guys for a review. And that way, once, once it is passed and we want to have a work session to explain some of the stuff, you guys will have time, specific questions, th those kind of things. So I, I think that would help us all. I know it would me for sure. I think it, it, it really would be a good to have it as a joint session it, yeah between the zoning commission the bca yeah. and the you know i think that's a great the, idea i yeah. think you guys could definitely Never benefit from interacting with one another yeah. so you know time, we agree. we see the results mm -hmm. then we have we have to make decisions and not really understand why they may have made the changes yeah. what was the reasoning behind it so i think sitting there with the commission or the zoning board uh, and getting the history and the reasoning behind it, the changes, I think is critical to helping us being able to make good decisions on home. I think I that's mean, a, a it, great it, sentiment. It, it's, ha it's happened before and you and I've talked about it. There's nothing more embarrassing, at least for me, being on the board, is to sit down there and start looking and making a decision or talking about something based on information you says oh well we've been considering changing this mm. all of a sudden we've got to go by what's here all they're hearing about out there is well you you might as well just go ahead and pass it since you said they're going to change it <laughs> that needs we, we need to really get on the same page with the commission and know what's what's coming on and what the changes are um, I've got a meeting coming up with them the first Thursday of May. Uh, I believe that's the fourth. Um, so what I'd like to do is, um, as part of our new business with the Zoning Commission, float that idea. I think they'll be amenable. Um, they all, um, I, 
I think would see the value of it as well. So Our I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Time. Just please don't schedule it. I'll just be in your. Uh, <laughs> sure. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, if anything, it would probably be in July. Yes. Well, it'll be in Alaska. <laughs> Can we ask our board if we would meet at their time to make it easier for them? So that they don't have to come to us, we'll go to them. Oh, sure. And um, I, I don't know if our board would agree, but uh, I'll be with that. Oh, it would. Times are meeting, though. Are, is that Thursdays? Well, so normally it's the first Thursday. However, this we would do this probably during a work session, okay, we would not have a regular a work session. It would be something we could all jointly schedule. So um, I'm willing to meet them versus forcing them to meet us. And I bet we can meet in the middle somewhere. Okay. You know what I mean? So. Okay. But no, I, I'm excited by that idea. Um, so yeah, let me get back to you on that. Any movement on enforcement? Yes, um, there has been some movement on enforcement. Um, so we had, uh, I think, four or five uh, properties brought to our attention um, regarding junk vehicles and some other issues. It's my understanding from Lori that um, three of those have been addressed. She's ran by them. The cars are no longer visible. Whether that means they were pulled somewhere far in the back where we can't see or that they were actually moved <laughs> off the property, either way. Um, that shed that was falling down on one of the cars has been cleared and removed. Looks 100% better. Yes. Um, and actually, uh, Tomorrow, it will be the first um, charges that we've ever brought against a, a, a violator. Uh, they will have their um, court date tomorrow. So that the, the, the doggy, doggy daycare. daycare. Oh, that's tomorrow? It is. Oh, oh the doggy daycare? Yeah. So, oh, oh, that was a little cool. before your time yeah, on you the board. But. I'd appreciate it. You'd like to be a little mouse oh, listening to this. We no. close this meeting before we just. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd be glad to stick around and chat with you guys if you like. Um, if you had no further yes. uh, new business, then yeah. I think okay, it's Thank you for yeah. giving thank the you. updates. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear a motion for adjournment? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Excellent. Thank you, board.